to the grocery store becoming a painful experience, uh, getting uh, meat, uh, eggs, uh, veggies, uh, and milk into your grocery cart becoming uh, ever more expensive. Well, that's why we have invited Aaron, Ta Aaron Chase, editor of $5dinners.com, to show us how to eat better for less on today's Dollar Stretcher interview. Hello, I'm Gary Foreman from the dollarstructure.com. As I said, we've got uh, Aaron Chase uh, uh, from $5dinners.com with us here today. Uh, Aaron's been featured on uh, the Rachel Ray Show, The View, uh, all kinds of local uh, TV and uh, various magazines uh, that you've heard of. Uh, Aaron, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. And now, uh, from your bio, I understand that uh, that you learned cooking uh, while being a house mom to tw twelve teenage boys. Uh, uh, what tools are we able to take from that experience that you can apply uh, uh, today? You know what? That's a great question, and actually something I was sharing with a friend yesterday. So I lived overseas. I lived in the Dominican Republic for a number of years, and. When I got there, it was like, okay, I need to learn. I, I, I could eat rice and beans every day, which isn't horrible, but, you know, I'm used to an American diet, and it was kind of shocking to go into, you know, rice and beans land and fried chicken and fried plantains and all these different foods that I wasn't used to eating. So I really had to learn um, how to cook quickly. Um, so I learned how to make homemade granola in the oven very quickly. Um, I think within the first week that I was there, I had my recipe down pat. I knew how I made, how to make it, what I liked, um, and then I would eat that with um, Dominican yogurt, which was a little bit different from the yogurt that we have here. Um, and I had been down there for a couple of years and um, really got my first taste in cooking for a crowd and, and, and cooking meals every single day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack um, for um, – a bunch of teenage boys. So talk about a crash course in learning how to um, cook and meal plan. We actually did all of our shopping, you know, in the Dominican um, farmers markets and grocery stores, which are not anything like what we have here in the U.S. And I um, also had to shop using um, Dominican pesos. So I didn't have a debit card. I didn't have a credit card to use. So just really valuable lessons in you know, meal planning, shopping on a budget, you know, you can't walk up to the register with $80 worth of products in your cart and $75 in your hand. So all of those really important lessons I learned, you know, overseas in a cross-cultural setting and have brought them all back here um, with me to the U.S. That's, that's how, that was my training. That's how I learned to cook. That's how I still cook, kind of the from scratch concept. And, um, you know, that's still how I shop. So, um, I think those lessons were really valuable um, in in moving back here. You know, when I first moved back, I, I went through sort of this cross culture shock, I guess, or reverse culture shock is is what it's called. And you know, I would walk into the grocery store and just freak out about the fact that there were you know twenty five brands of toothpaste because I always bought the same brand in the Dominican Republic because that's the only one that they had. So once I kind of got past that, I found myself just sort of like walking into the grocery store and just buying whatever. I had all the tools and I thought I was doing the right thing, um, but really once, um, so it was in 2008, the summer of 2008, and the gas prices started popping up and it was, you know, the, the election was coming up, it was when we were first hearing about the, you know, the R word, the recession was coming out in articles and in, 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 in the media. Um, we were seeing the same thing. We were feeling the same pinch. So my husband and I sat down, and we, you know, we we were living pretty close to paycheck to paycheck at the time. And we sat down, and you know, our gas. He had a long commute. His gas was doubling. It was really hurting our budget. So we decided. I decided to um, try and counteract that. It was not working at the time. Counterbalance that with spending less on groceries. So I, you know, pulled all of those strategies out of my back pocket and really got aggressive with how I was shopping how I was meal planning, and then the part, the piece that I didn't have in the Dominican Republic that, I, that you can do here in the U.S. is the couponing. I really got aggressive with the couponing and, you know, looking for them and, you know, printing them and clipping them every single week, matching them up, 
with what is on sale. You know, we, we weren't brand specific to let's say yogurt. So if a particular yogurt had a coupon was on sale, we would get that kind that week, and the next week it would be a different kind. Um, same thing, you know, with different frozen vegetables, and you know, using coupons when they had them or buying the store brand when they when those were on sale, and just playing that game of really seeing how you know, much less we can spend on groceries. So we went, you know, we were a family of four at the time. We went from spending 500 and down to 250 Really one of those, you know, cut your bill in half stories that you hear. Um, so it was a combination of pulling out those old tools that I had and then adding the couponing on top of that that really helped me get that, you know, get to my grocery bill in half and then get to making the $5 meals because the, I was paying as little as possible for all the ingredients and then you know as I pieced it together you know they kept coming up coming in under you know five dollars and which is when I started the website and you know it's just it's been such a, a great um, tool for myself I um, keeping the challenge going for myself but as well as for so many other people we've been able to help so many people and that's really why um, why we do five dollar dinners is to help other people and challenge other people well, I, I know my experience when people ask me about uh, cutting their budget, I tell them, I mean, once once you look past house and car, and often that's either a refinance or, or if you're really in trouble that you need to sell them and downsize. But past that, usually food is, is the place where you can make the greatest impact on your budget because you're making purchasing decisions very often. Uh, you're spending a, quite a bit of your money there, so you can make a significant uh, impact in that area. Yeah, exactly right. You know, I think groceries are the third largest discretionary expense is the, is the little catchphrase I read all the time. And, you know, I, that's true for our family. You know, at, that, at the time in 2008, we were on pay-as-you-go cell phone plans. Okay, I mean, this is, I mean, cell phones, smartphones. I didn't even have a smartphone then, but um, pay-as-you-go smartphone plans, or no, regular phone plans. And we had um, recently purchased a house, and the, the, the rate that we had was ridiculously low. Um, that we, when we were able to get that, when we bought our house, um, the lowest at that time anyways, we did refinance at one point uh, a couple years later, but, um, you know, we were, you know, as, you know, quote, cheap as we could get, you know, we had just recently shopped around our car insurance and found a several hundred dollars less, um, so that's exactly what you said, this was the only area that we had left that we could really control, um, and that, you know, you know, exactly, you know that purchasing power was in my hands. You know I'm the grocery shopper in our family, and and that's where I think um, you know people are. Well, couponing's not worth it, or I don't have time for that. Well, if you sit down and you save sixty dollars off of your groceries, and you spent forty five minutes working on your list, your meal plan, maybe printing a couple coupons that you see on coupons.com or another uh, printable coupon website. Sixty dollars for forty-five minutes is a pretty good hourly return um, for a lot of people. So I think you have to kind of—it's almost like a mindset switch. You kind of have to think, okay, how much could I save? And again, it goes back to the challenge. And do you want to play the game? You have to kind of make it fun, or it—it it, it can get you—you. You, we don't want you to burn out, right? So, um, but I think once you get going and you see and you and you get the the shopping strategies and the cooking strategies, you know, kind of under your belt you start to see oh my goodness I don't have to buy chicken stock again I can buy a whole chicken and make my own you know so those kinds of things when you cut those expenses out of your grocery budget when you cut out the impulse buys you know for me it was when we lived in Ohio it was this um, potato ship potato chip making machine in the grocery store. It killed me every single time. You could smell it from the produce section. It's clear across the other side of the store. But all I wanted to do was buy these sweet potato chips whenever I'd smell them. Oh, they were so good. But did we need that? Was that on my list that week? Probably not. Um, so I think that, you know, that, that's just another, you know, thing that's too. And that could be a cultural thing too for me. Um, and maybe a challenge for you too is, um, you know, we live in this, you know, instantaneous culture, right? We can have and get whatever we want whenever we want it. And there's so many choices. Like how many hundreds of thousands of things are there in the grocery store, right? Um, but I, living overseas for so long, I lived overseas for six years, as, as we said, and I didn't have a lot of those things. Like there wasn't this instant gratification. I just couldn't run to the store and buy a box of granola bars. We didn't even have granola bars in my town. So, you know, I think part of that too, you know, is 
in playing the game is I've, I've had a little past experience in being able to fight off. It doesn't happen all the time. I'll, I'll cave to the Twix bar every now and then or to the potato chips bag um, from the fresh potato chip machine. But I think that it, that's too one of those things of, you know, is this something that you want or is this something that you need to make a great meal this week um, in, in that impulse buying as well. I totally went on a rabbit trail here. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's fine. Uh, you know, it's funny. I remember a number of years back we did a piece uh, uh, on uh, the little prepared carrot pieces, and you know how much you could earn by earn per hour by cutting up your you know cleaning and cutting up your own carrots. And I think it worked out to about thirty dollars an hour, which for most people is a pretty good income. But let's get back into the tools because you were talking about uh, uh, you know such things as as meal meal planning couponing, cooking from scratch. Now, one thing that I hear often, and I suspect you do too, is that a lot of people, especially younger people, but even people you know, in, in the my age bracket, never learned how to cook. They, you know, that wasn't something that, uh, that was taught in their home. And if, you know, if they don't go out to eat uh, and they don't bring fast food home, uh, they bring something that's really prepared and it's popping the microwave or popping the oven, you know, and it says 325 degrees for, for 45. They follow that direction. They don't know, like you say, make your own broth, chicken broth. Making your own chicken broth is an alien concept to them. Uh, and, and they're afraid to try almost. And they, what do you say to people like that? What's the best way for them to learn and actually get their feet wet? Uh, uh, where they can take advantage of some of the, the, the real savings that come from cooking from scratch? You know, that's a great question, and maybe I'll do a video series on this. This is, I mean, there's so much. Um, you know, I think the the challenge in not growing up cooking, I didn't grow up cooking either, and, you know, I was forced into this situation where I had to learn if I wanted to eat what I wanted to eat. Um, it's, it is different here. So um, a couple things you could do. Um, you could go on a sort of like a real food or from scratch challenge. There's there's a bunch of you know real food websites. Paleo is a great one. Paleo is very you know sort of from scratch. You kind of have to piece everything together. Getting rid of you know maybe it's starting with high fructose corn syrup. You know that's in a lot of things and that's in maybe it's soy because soy is in a lot of boxed um, processed foods. Um, so you know, just even going through your pantry and just taking them out and then, you know, starting, um, kind of starting over. I think, um, you know, $5 dinners is a great resource for recipes that are kind of piecing together different meats and vegetables and how to pull it all together um, into a dish. You know, I think as far as meal planning goes and figuring out kind of your new cooking strategies, I would highly recommend going with themed nights, and I'll, sh I'll kind of tie this together off the top of my head here, so forgive me if this gets a little crazy, but so let's start with theme nights, and then we'll integrate some of the cooking concepts in there. Um, so theme nights, um, let's do Monday is chicken and rice night, right? So there are a bunch of chicken and rice recipes. You could do a casserole, you could do them separated, you could do chicken enchiladas with a side of rice and maybe beans or something like that. Um, and then, so it would be going out and finding a recipe that, you know, is kind of a chicken and rice recipe that maybe has a new cooking method that's simple enough that you can do it on a busy weeknight. Um, you know, maybe it's that you stick the, the chicken piece, you cut up some chicken with some rice into a baking dish, maybe with some broccoli and spices, and you, with the right amount of liquid, you put it in the oven and it's done. Um, that's an easy casserole that you could, you know, a chicken and rice casserole that you could do. Um, those recipes are pretty easy to follow. You know, the next night would be, let's see, Tuesday night could be pasta night. You know, pretty much everybody knows how to cook pasta. I think my eight-year-old even knows how to make macaroni noodles, right? So pasta night, you know, throw some sauce. If spaghetti is your thing, do spaghetti regularly, and then one night try to make your own fettuccine Alfredo sauce. It's, it's, I say it's not hard, but I'm also a seasoned home chef, so <laughs> to be fair, it's one of the, you could do a jar if you wanted to, um, but it would be cheaper to make your own kind of roux white sauce with butter and flour and stock or milk. Um, and, you know, I have tutorials on how to do that on $5 dinners and, um, you know, 
just going out there and trying it. If you making your own white sauce with some milk and flour and butter is not that expensive, and it's not going to cost you a ton, maybe a dollar or two, if you screw it up. So um, that's one um, you know thing you could try. You know, make a white sauce and throw in some Parmesan cheese, mix it with noodles, and you're good to go. Um, so you know, being creative on pasta night. Um, let's move. Let's you know. Friday night, pizza night, right? That's a very popular. Um, pizza night. Pizza dough is making it from scratch is by far the cheapest way to do it. You can make a, a giant, you know, feed our family anyways, um, pizza dough for less than a dollar. Um, and I say that that's based on the way I price out flour. I do it by the cup and all of the, you know, the spices and the yeast and everything. Um, so you can, you know, doing that is a dollar versus three to four dollars for if you were to buy it at the store or frozen five or six dollars um, is going to be much cheaper and you can use leftover ingredients from your meals the week before if you have leftover chicken you can throw that on with some veggies and some cheese so you can really do pizza inexpensively as well especially if you make your own crust well how do you make your own crust I would recommend doing it in the bread machine I wouldn't recommend somebody who isn't familiar with making their own bread to try from scratch in a mixer or in a bowl um, where you have to proof the yeast and all of that stuff. That can be a little bit overwhelming and frustrating too if you're trying to get dinner done and your, your, your dough doesn't work out. So if you have a bread machine, um, take advantage of the dough cycle on your bread machine and you can have pizza dough. You know, as long as you start it an hour and a half before you need to have it in the oven, you'll be good to go. With your homemade pizza, so th and is that helpful? Like, does that? Yeah, I, I think I, for myself now, uh, and and I do uh, a lot of the cooking at our house, and I enjoy it. Uh, and, and I'm self-taught. I, I think for somebody who's maybe uh, brand new, the first time out, they should just do their own pasta. And if that means buying jar sauce, fine. You know, try to buy, get a buy one get one or use a coupon kind of deal. And that's so it's not. The next time out, make their own sauce, and that. So each time you're stretching what your knowledge base is a, a little bit. You know exactly. I think it is kind of the baby steps. I wouldn't try a bunch of new recipes in one week. I actually had the other night. It was on Twitter. We were having a little Twitter chat, and um, we somebody suggest said that they plan their meal. They have their family favorites. You know, maybe it's a list of 20 or 25 things that they make on a regular basis that they're comfortable making. Kind of those meals you can just throw together without really having to think too much about it. And then once a week she does a new recipe, um, which I think that's a great concept. I'm, I'm kind of in a different boat because I'm constantly trying new things and, you know, blogging about what works and what doesn't work. Um, and what ingredients work well with others, but I think for you know, you know, a non-food blogger and somebody who's new to this, I think that's a great idea. Go with spaghetti. Go with a homemade pizza crust one week, and then you know the next week try to make your own crust and see how it turns out. Um, you might be surprised, especially if you do it in a bread machine. Um, and then the following week, you know, try to make your own sauce for a pasta, um, as you said. So I think. Baby stepping it, um, not trying to be too aggressive and too, um, you know, too crazy with the recipes that you're trying to take advantage of what you've purchased, whether it was on sale. Um, another great thing too that I have found to be a really cool tool um, is kind of the slow cooker freezer cooking combined mm -hmm. concept. Yes. And this is it's all over the place and it's very popular um, where you take all the ingredients for what you would put in the slow cooker and put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it in the freezer. Um, that really makes for easy weeknight dinners. You can thaw it the night before. If you need, if you forget, you can put it in a bowl of warm water in the morning and just dump it, you know, partially thawed in the slow cooker. So, you know, what that means is it could be stew meat plus tomatoes plus, you know, cut up carrots and cut up potatoes put that all in a bag, you put it in the freezer. Um, it could be a roast with your, you know, your favorite type of onion um, with some seasonings and potatoes and whatever is your favorite slow cooker meal. That's another great um, kind of idea for a new chef is slow cooker meals are really, I, I shouldn't say this, a simple slow cooker meal where it's just adding a couple of ingredients and spices 
are really hard to screw up. Okay, the slow cooker just mm -hmm. does a great job. If you're putting together the wrong types of ingredients, then you could screw it up. But if you're following a simple slow cooker recipe, maybe it's chicken breasts with sweet potatoes and carrots and some curry powder um, and coconut milk, maybe that's a really simple slow cooker dinner that is not, you're not really having to like, it's not a new cooking method, right? You're just dumping it all into the slow cooker. So that would be another time, you know, saving, money saving, new, you know, new cook in the kitchen sort of um, strategy would be to use the slow cooker and if you want to double up on meals you can put a lot of them into the freezer. Oh, yeah, I, th those are those are both tools that I think are marvelous. Uh, uh, and the, one, one thing that uh, seems to be challenging for a lot of people now is uh, it is inflation, uh, grocery price inflation. I mean they say it's six percent I don't know. My grocery store sure seems like it's worse than that. Uh, uh, you know, meats have gone up uh, significantly. Uh, uh, you know, so many things. And uh, is there anything that you feel that people can do to kind of uh, combat that? So, a, a note about that before I do the combat part. I think that a lot of the sale prices are pretty similar. And that's what I've seen across two states and across multiple grocery stores um, over the past four to five years. And the baseline prices have certainly gone up. Um, but I think the sale prices for, you know, let's say chicken or beef, they're still hitting under $2 a pound for certain cuts. Um, that have, and they've always hit under $2 a pound. So, um, but yes, you are correct. There is a drought here in Texas that is going to affect the beef prices. Um, I just actually did an interview with, um, oh boy, Kiplingers, I think, about that. And so I, I it's happening, or it's going to be happening, and it's going to be, you know, I do know milk has gone up, but milk doesn't go on sale that often. Um, so to combat that, it's, it's using all the same strategies, and, you know, it might be you have to be more aggressive with couponing, so you can cut on... Um, household cleaning products and toiletries, you're spending less money on those things, you have more money for fresh meats and produce. Um, so that would be one tip. Um, there is this whole, you know, and, we, and this is a whole other section, we could talk about this for half an hour, but um, about shopping at the drugstores and how you can pretty much pay very little out of pocket sales tax or not much more than that when you play the drugstore game, which is where you're, the drugstore is giving you you know, if it's CVS, extra care bucks back. So if you, you know, usually you have to start with 10 or $15 and buy a few products and you get the extra care bucks in return and then you use those next week with your coupons and the sale prices and you kind of roll those from week to week and then you're not paying for toothpaste, you're not paying for soap, you're not paying for razors, you're not paying, you're paying very little for diapers or baby wipes or whatever it may be. So you can spend less of your grocery dollars, your household goods and grocery dollars on those types of things, you know, I think that I saw Windex for 25 cents the other day at Walgreens, I think it was. Um, so when you can spend less on those things, that frees up more of your cash in your grocery, on your grocery line item, in your budget, for, you know, to kind of help offset the rising cost of beef. You know, it could be that we're not going to see beef under $2 a pound for ground beef or stew beef or whatever it may be. Um, those are, that might be more like 3 to $4 a pound now. So we need to be smart in how we're spending our other grocery dollars and household, household goods dollars so we can combat that rise because, well, unless you're vegetarian, you still want to buy your meat, right? So is that helpful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me, let me ask one last question. Uh, uh, is there one tip or trick that, uh, uh, that you think that every person that's good uh, uh, at managing their grocery budget uh, definitely has to use? You want okay. My tip. My well, is there, yeah, is there, is there one? Is there one where you go? You know what? If you're serious about about keeping your gross, grocery budget under control, you definitely have to be doing this. Uh, using cash to buy all your groceries. Interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. And I, why? Why so? Um, I, I I I alluded to or I said it earlier on. You can't walk up to the cashier with $80 worth of products in your hand and $75 in your wallet. You just can't do that. So they're not going to say, oh, just bring back that $5 later, right? 
Um, so, and, and I think that when you have to stay on a strict budget, and I know a lot of people would not agree with this, and I use my debit card a lot. I use it for a lot of things outside of groceries, but when I am serious about spending less on groceries or I, you know, I shop at Costco some, like I will go in there with my $200 and it's like, okay, I'm not going to be able to get that giant thing of popcorn that I want to get. I'm not, you know, and that's actually good because I have a popcorn popper and I can just buy the bag of the, pre, the kernels and pop it myself. That's definitely the cheap way to go. Not always the most convenient, but definitely the cheapest. So I think having the cash in your hand and you're saying, okay, here's my $200 that I get to spend this month at Costco and then I'll fill in the rest at the grocery store. You know, that's what you got to do. Um, so Costco isn't going to let me you know, write an IOU, right? So I think if you really want to be serious, it would be that and a combination of challenging yourself to maybe clip five to ten coupons for things you need each week and save an extra five to ten dollars each week, starting with that. Um, and then you might find, oh, I can do this couponing thing. It's not as hard. Or, oh, I saved more than I thought. It's worth my time now. Fantastic. Well, Aaron, we want to th thank you for your time. Uh, some great information uh, uh, for our viewers today. Uh, we want to encourage them to visit your site. Uh, we'll link to it uh, both on the uh, our YouTube channel uh, as well as uh, the article that we posted uh, on the dollarstretcher.com. Uh, and it's the number five dollar dinners.com. Uh, and please go visit Erin there. Uh, she didn't mention uh, she's got. Uh, uh, not only a, a lot of great recipes, uh, there's uh, some, some very, very good uh, tips for uh, 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 how to uh, do everything from, uh, uh, from slicing an onion without crying your eyes out uh, to, <laughs> to, to various kitchen things so when we were talking about some of, the, uh, uh, some of the learning experiences that we all go through in the kitchen. Uh, so you've got some great resources there. Uh, and so you, you want to make sure that you visit the site. Uh, uh, we want to also encourage you to subscribe to the Dollar Stretcher uh, YouTube channel, uh, uh, visit us on the various social media, and naturally come visit the dollarstretcher.com where we're always about uh, helping you live better for less. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.